The year is 1962. Computers are still in the early days of rendering graphics, and they need a fast way to draw the simplest two-dimensional shape, a line. The problem is simple. You want to draw a vector between two points, a vector that is represented by the equation y equals mx plus b. But you're not drawing on a piece of paper with an infinite number of points. You are drawing on a raster or a pixel map. How do you know which pixels will fit your line the best? While working at IBM, a computer scientist named Jack Elton Bresenham devised an algorithm that allows just that, a pixel approximation to a line. This method is later creatively named Bresenham's Line Algorithm, and becomes one of the earliest algorithms developed in the field of computer graphics. Let's go back to our equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. How do you convert this to pixels? When we look at a grid representing monitor pixels, the x-axis moves normally from left to right, but the y-axis is inverted, because the pixels are drawn from top to bottom. To make things easier, let's make this equation be a function of both x and y. By changing the slope, or m, to be delta y over delta x, we can move the variables around and get the standard form. Let's note that a equals delta y and b equals negative delta x. We know if a point is on our line if plugging in x and y gives us zero. Now let's move one step at a time horizontally across our line. We increment x by 1, but should y also increase, or should it stay the same? To figure this out, let's look at the halfway point between the two y pixels. We said that if we plug x and y into our equation and get 0, that point should be on the line. But if the result is greater than 0, then our ideal line is below our candidate point. Let's call this case 1. Conversely, if the result is less than zero, our ideal line is above our candidate point. Let's call this case two. If we repeat this step until we reach our endpoint, we get a Bresenham line. Now this method works fine, but we're using a fraction in our calculation, and it turns out that floating point arithmetic is a very slow operation in computers. So let's make everything an integer. Instead of evaluating a midpoint, let's first find the difference between the two points. We subtract the initial coordinate from our final coordinate to get the difference. Converting this back into standard form and simplifying, we get the following equation. Earlier we noted what a and b are equal to, so let's plug those values in. Just like our other method, if the difference is positive, we have case 1, where y increments. That means that if we plug in the adjusted values for the next points, change to standard form, and simplify, the change in d for this case is delta y minus delta x. If this difference is negative, we have case 2, where y stays the same. If we plug in the adjusted values for the next points, change to standard form, and simplify, the change in d for this case is simply delta y. But it looks like we are still using fractions in our calculations. Well, since we only care about the sign of the accumulated difference, we can multiply everything by 2 to get rid of them. And voila, we have a fast Bresenham line algorithm. Unfortunately, the algorithm we just discussed only works for lines with small increasing slopes and an x-axis that moves to the right. We can cover negative slopes by checking whether y needs to increase or decrease to get to the finish line. We can do a similar check for x and decrement instead. And by swapping the x and y coordinates, we can cover positive and negative steep slopes. Nowadays, this algorithm is so well optimized that it is computed in the hardware of graphics cards and can be found in all sorts of software graphics libraries. We can make the line look even better if we apply some anti-aliasing. In 1991, another computer scientist named Xiaolin Wu made an algorithm that draws pairs of pixels straddling the line, which are colored according to their distance from the line. This gives the illusion of a smoother shape and makes the graphics look more natural, at the cost of more computation. Connect these lines to make a shape, fill that shape in with a color, apply some linear algebra, and congratulations, you have 3D graphics.